performance. That's right. You guys have constantly been seeing Poison Ivy and it's just because we want to show you guys the full end depth of what we do with these mini trucks instead of just kind of showing you just an assembly line. Because I'm telling you, it's like we've constantly been saying, it's mini truck madness month, baby. So we're here with the beautiful Poison Ivy, like we've already said multiple times. As you guys can see, the engine bay already polished up, as we've already mentioned. Now in the last video, we kind of gave you guys a little teaser with just in cranking with basically us doing nothing with our engine harness. Fast forward, now but, you're on the next video. But now, today is the day, baby. Yup. Where we get this thing, fuel, power to the ignition, and we actually crank over this motor and hear this thing fire up. For the first time. And seeing now what we're gonna be doing to finish off the rest of this old girl to get her on the road so she can go visit her queen. Ain't that right, Terry? Oh yeah, and we definitely have to delete these ugly and outdated headers. So Marlon's already on his way to go get some fresh headers so we can make sure that this side of the exhaust looks just as good as, as the, the intake, intake side. Because he already knows that it's not polished and it ain't flying with him. Oh, so yeah. we've already cleaned up the engine bay harness. You guys are gonna see how much cleaner we've already made it, what we've already tucked. Me and Terry are gonna finish off a couple other things, but you guys are gonna see the one last step on what we're gonna be doing, and that's getting the fuel pump assembly situated in this old girl. So stay tuned, get on ready, and let's show you guys some mini truck madness, baby. So that means more wiring. So let's go on to the fuel pump and install the Walbro 255 external fuel pump while we wire it up with the whole fuel lines already buttoned up and situated so we can actually give this motor fuel and hear this thing fire up. The wiring is actually a lot easier than you think, folks. So stay tuned. So we have a bed that goes up and down, baby. So it's time to use its advantages. So instead of jack, jacking up the vehicle or going under the truck to install the fuel pump, we're actually just gonna lift up the bed and access it a lot faster and quicker. Must be nice. You better watch out, big dog. Can you give me a little bit more there, partner? That's it, big dog. Perfect. So Terry just popped the bed. And now it's time to go and do the fuel pump. We've already got the nice external Walbro 255 fuel pump. Now it's time to go ahead and take off all that old carbureted clickly clack fuel pump. None of this stuff is necessary. It definitely needs to be upgraded. That being said, also gonna make sure that the fuel lines are up to date. Let's start removing some of these lines. Let's get it cleaned up and up to date. So we've got a big problem in the situation. We've got the fuel filter and we got the fuel pump. Since we already have another fuel filter in the front, that's how the OEM 240 sits. We're going to head and go ahead and remove this fuel filter. Go ahead and put it straight into the line to the fuel pump and have it right over to the front. You can go ahead and get a smaller or a bigger Micron fuel filter to protect the fuel pump. In this case, this one is not adequate enough to run uh, if you have an external fuel pump. So you definitely need to upgrade that fuel filter as well. Like we've already said, let's start removing some of this stuff and let's get that big boy on there. Here with guess what wiring you're gonna go ahead and remove the OEM wiring now in this situation you can actually utilize the same wiring harness too you can go ahead and clip both of these ends off and use this as a power and a ground this will run the OEM system to the relay OEM system to your fuses basically a factory system with these 720s it's very important that you understand that the body harness is completely separated from the KA dual cam harnesses. You're grabbing fuel pump by your key from the body harness. You're grabbing key from the engine harness to turn your ECU on. Now on your 240s, it's a newer system. It integrates a EFI relay and all this stuff to make sure that the whole body harness works when you have cruise control. In this situation, this is a motor swap. This is a down and dirty, putting power down on a chassis. So all we're doing is making sure the ECU turns on, we're getting the right signals, powers to your injectors, throttle body, spark, your coil, the whole nine yards to make sure it's running because we're not really going for, for fuel mileage, for cruising, it's just daily driven, make sure it runs and good to go. That being said, we're going ahead and getting this situated so we can have the fuel pump 
nice and healthy with the fuel pressure at 43 PSI and not at 10. Let's go. Boom, we got the fuel pump, detector for the P clamps. Now as well, if you guys are looking for one of these for your KA swap for your 720, no need to fear, Terry Thornberry Performance is here to help you with your build. Any little tricks, any little tips that we use on our trucks to get them swapped, if you guys have any questions or wanting to actually, wanting to actually purchase them, you can hit us up, DM us on our Instagram. It's below Terry Thornberry Performance. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. We have a lot of messages. So, so, in, so any parts that you see on our YouTube, us using either the motor mounts, trans mounts, whatever. Here's the motor mounts, the trans mounts, fuel pumps, um, intake pipes, whatever it is, you name it, we'll try and help you. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of variables, so we, when we do this, we're in house, we're doing it. So let us know exactly what's going on so we can try and help you. But that, that being said, fuel pump is gonna be one of the biggest things on these guys. We can either do internal, you kinda have to cut up the tank to kinda keep away from that. We do external. Let's get cracking. Getting a fuel pump on here is actually kinda tedious just in the sense of you hear the fuel feed coming out from the tank and then the fuel feed coming into the rail, going to the motor is in a pretty tight spot. The bracket's not even the size of this. So your own battle is trying to find your own way on how to get it clean. In this sense, we try and just pick it up here and kind of just do like a nice little U around to just get it nice and going. You definitely want to have these below the tank. That's going to be the only really trick. Don't have them above, have them below, not too below where you're going to scrape it off and catch on fire. Go ahead, put the fuel lines on there. Make sure you tie in both your barb and fittings up. Don't forget about your copper washers in the middle because if not, you're definitely gonna leak everywhere. That being said, moving on to now the directional, always wanna make sure that on these type of fuel pumps, the terminals are facing the way. So the terminals are facing toward the motor. So where you want the fuel to go, it'll be facing that way. We got one line cut. Well now we'll be doing our fancy little loop on there and we'll be prying up the system and seeing how this old girl sounds. All right, so we are in the inside. While Jack finishes up the fuel pump situation and we get some fuel to the motor. So I was explaining that we take out the AC blower or heater blower to actually get more room for the engine harness to now come into the actual interior of the chassis. So you can place the ECU where you want it. Now on some of the 720s, they have a center console. We like to position the ECU right behind the center console, right under the radio, just because we think it's a very, very good place. It keeps it away from the heat and everything like that, and all the wiring gets routed up, pretty tucked up and nice and routed. Now with that being said, this truck didn't come with the center console. It just came with the phone and the bench seat and just basically a clean looking interior. So with that being said, we just don't want an ECU just chilling right here, letting everyone know, you know, it's basically a motor swap. So with that being said, we routed up the, the engine wiring, all routed right here. And if you have the newer hard bodies, Nissan hard bodies, their engine harness and chassis harness runs exactly the same position. So we were just like thinking, instead of putting the ECU right here, we might as well run it the same exact way in the newer chassis of the Nissans. So as you can see, it looks super clean and super OEM. Now we can just check if it's going, the door's gonna close and all the wiring is going to be good to go. So it's not getting pinched or chafed. 
Oh, you can see. Beautiful. So now when someone comes in to step and sit down, they don't have to worry about, or Marlin doesn't have to worry about wires getting moved around, a ground being pulled or whatever. Everything's tucked, everything's put away, everything's good to go. Bam, a lot more condensed. We now have the external fuel pump nice and routed. We went ahead and obviously did the little rainbow over on top of the fuel pump. Make sure this has a nice, sufficient amount of fuel, no kinks, and as well a nice little S going to it. That being said, with the fuel pump, make sure you just as well do another ground just to make sure this system is has a nice good circuit all the way around. Once that's being said, make sure your worm clamps are nice and tight. Then go over to your vehicle, prime the system, make sure you got no leaks, go ahead and start the car, and then now see how your system works. That's gonna be the same thing we're gonna be doing in this case, priming the system, make sure there's no leaks, and then starting this whole girl up, seeing how she sounds. I'm an adult feeling like a kid again. I love it, baby. Woo! Now I know exactly why they do this. Beautiful! Appreciate you guys, Marlon. All right. I think uh, we don't have to do that much more wiring. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we still got the bags to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Poison Ivy is definitely gonna be scooped now. You guys heard her turned on. We went through the whole fuel system. We made sure that now the motor and everything electronically turns on by the key. As you guys just seen, Terry started in there. As I made sure just all the terminals are on here. So now we go ahead and do the finalization on the alternator, get the radiator, the cooling plumbing in here, and finally get a nice intake pipe situated so we can now finally take this girl out on the road so she can see some sun and finally overtake some people so people can now start seeing the rear taillights on this thing instead of Marlin constantly seeing the taillights on everybody else. Isn't that right, Terry? That's right. We are waiting for Marlin to pick up these headers because to be honest, me and Terry, even though it sounds good, she don't look that good, isn't that right? It don't fit the par of the whole enchilada. This is like a little mosaic piece right here. We got the beautiful poison ivy on the top, and this is me and Terry's definition of our artwork. So we gotta finish that up. Last but not least, to finalize this build, we are waiting for the drive shaft to be in so we can finally get this thing switching gears and driving on the road. But to be honest, we have a couple little bit more secrets to show you guys. So you guys have seen Fred B2, the king cab, but are you ready for his little mijo? Let's jump on over. Boom! We got dysfunctional. You guys can see she looks almost similar to Fred. We got the fender mirrors, we got the wide stance, but it's got the ranchero vibe to it. We got the bull horns, we got the rusted, rusty rack. Same thing as ours, right? But all cleaned up. We're gonna keep it nice and basic for you guys. You guys can already see the beautiful power plant. We went with the SR20 Notch Top BBL. This one actually is not the turbo model. It is gonna have the spark plugs. It's the DE non-turbo, but just for this record with the mini truck vibe and everything, we went ahead and put the turbo manifold on there just to give it a nice little ramp forward runners. 
We're gonna go ahead and finish this off. You're not gonna see much on this thing because to be honest, we want to bring you guys to the car meets so to interact so you guys to get you guys asking questions to see more about these mini trucks. We'll be having Fred posted up with Dysfunctional at the meets, so make sure that when you guys see them, you ask questions, take pictures, and get in the vibes with us. Hopefully you guys liked and enjoyed this mini truck air stuff going on. We definitely have more stuff going for you, so don't go anywhere. We'll be jumping back to get on some more cars because I know some of you guys want to see some of that stuff going on. Hopefully you guys liked and enjoyed another episode of Terry Thornberry Performance. Until further notice, we'll see you guys on the streets. If not the streets, we'll see you on the track. If not the track, we'll see you at the shop, baby. Peace out. Woo! And at the next video, stay tuned because we'll be going all the way to Arizona picking up a new Nissan Hardbody D21 and putting our little flavors to it and giving it that D13 touch, baby. Arizona, so... So stay tuned and you'll be seeing that. Woo! Yeah!